Mike Davis. He is uh, the team lead at Dedupe Marketing. How right. are well, you? I do, I do many things. Yes, I, I saw that. I was trying to work yeah. through all the things that you do here. Why don't you explain well, so you it? Have to scroll <laughs> like well, I, this I, list. I've, I've done a lot of things. Uh, actually, so I, I ran marketing for Oak Arena Networks. Okay. Oh, you came. You actually I came, came from, from Oak Arena. Did we? Did we meet? Uh, we, we, we probably, probably did. did one. Who, Who are you? I'm way. John MacArthur. Oh, John MacArthur. <laughs> <laughs> and I would know okay. you from. He says. Yeah. That, well, I mean, we probably met in past lives too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it before Oak Arena. I was at. Uh, I was in the content delivery business, and I was at Sun Microsystems working okay. on stores, something called Honeycomb, which you may I, remember. Uh, yeah, new Honeycomb, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, so I, I think of, we crossed paths. A lot of there. friends over there at, uh, at, at Snorkel. <laughs> It's snorkel. Yeah, some of them are still there, but I know, I know. But they're all calling me now. So, uh, yeah, 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 some are. So, so yeah. some are. Yeah. yeah, it's not clever store. Just going over in that shop. That's but, true. Um, uh. that's, that's true. So I, I uh, was part of the acquisition. So, okay. Uh, and the acquisition process, which is, you know, I can talk about that. Yeah. Uh, I, I know all about Ocarina and its legacy product, and and now I'm involved with all the different projects, that are the platforms that are now integrating that technology into yes. uh, in the Dell portfolio. So this is one of those situations where you've got a, a market that becomes a feature, right? It, yes, that's right. So right. it was a standalone platform it a, it a, that worked with, a market, right. with other people's stores that shall now be nameless, right? Yeah. And, and so we had to, you know, and the, and the real IP in there was the, the algorithms and the, the workflows, the policy-based workflows that shrunk the data. And right. you know, we did a better job of shrinking data than anyone else. And, and, um, and we had started working back at the beginning of, let's see what year is it now, so 2010, the beginning of 2010, we'd started working with a few OEMs to actually embed our intellectual property in their platforms. Okay. And, and did Dell that, was one of those guys. Okay, and so did we, that stop mm. then after the acquisition? Are you still yeah. have an OEM So Dell kind of pulled that trigger okay. and took us off the table, For as now, they say. Or, and and uh, there are, I mean, clearly we wouldn't go and engage with HP okay. or some direct sure. competitor, but there are other OEMs that are say vertically market oriented, right. like like. It's like uh, if I was in the, if I was in the medical medical image, space, image or you were looking for oil, oil um, okay. or you know maybe a VMware or someone like that, where we have a real strong relationship with okay. Dell, um, we would look for opportunities to do tighter application integration with those guys. Okay. So that you know there's still uh, uh, the possibility of open discussions there, um, you know. But but we're the thing we're no longer interested in doing is is shipping a co-processor that goes and helps sell more network appliance okay. uh, NAS systems right. and okay. so forth. So, and that's, that makes all the sense. And do you have world. other jobs uh, in addition to that? You, you, you were, we you mentioned the long list. Well, what's interesting <laughs> yeah, is... you said a long list, is, so that is, was short. We, uh, at Oak Arena, we're very much focused on the NAS marketplace. Right. The, the file, it was all file-based workflows. Um, we compressed and deduped files and, and based on policies and attributes of those files. And, and so most of us at Ocarina were experts on the NAS business and the file system business. Okay. People came from Isilon and people came from Sun and NetApp and elsewhere. And, and um, so, so I immediately had an affinity with the, the PG at Dell, PG being the product, the enterprise products group and the storage okay. team there under Darren Thomas and, and helping them because, they, you know, Dell has been Dell's in, very in the block de based. very block based, very right. block oriented. All the IP that Dell owned was essentially block based, yeah, and they, Windows they, file they had okay, purchased but, uh, the uh, the Exanet right. NAS, which is not we call it the DSFS Scalable. file system, but it's really a full NAS stack from disk all the way up through the protocol layer. And and so uh, they had acquired Exanet um, not too long before Ocarina, very maybe, maybe four months, right. three or four months prior. Right. Okay. And so they were down the path of. You know, getting those products to market, and so um, I jumped right in on those to you know help them with kind of use case based marketing and building more collateral. I actually wrote some of the white paper stuff. Okay, so you're a solutions and, and so guy. I was I was kind of like a consultant into that the product okay. marketing effort, and and as of uh, say a, a month or two ago, I've, I officially jumped over from uh, uh, to to be on that team. So right now at Dell, I, I report up. To, through Darren Thomas, um, I manage the team that that does all the the NAS and file system work, yep. and that spans these platforms, right? So yep. we have Equalogic and Power Vault announced today, and then other things, so, you know, uh, implied uh, dot dot uh, dot in the future. Dot dot dot. It's been discussed it's a fair been, bit on here. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, it sort of makes sense to at some point to integrate scalable file system and mm -hmm. deduplication into the. Uh, uh, into into compellent of all or, of the above, but, um, and so 
owning oh. owning uh, the, the the file system piece as a key IP component yep. that goes on different platforms, right. but also the Ocarina piece. Um, um, and you know, we're starting to talk about how that's going to roll out over time. I'm giving a presentation tomorrow morning that's okay. going to go into a little more detail. Okay. But each uh, of these platforms, as I think Darren was discussing this morning, have different operating systems. The, the, the embedded operating systems are different, so yeah. there's a it's, fair bit of work to be it's done. Non, it's non-trivial, and it's so non -trivial. Yeah. we have, we <laughs> have uh, the, the Ocarina development team, which was based in San Jose, has moved over to a Dell office in Sunnyvale, so the Silicon Valley Dev Center, that's yeah. DC, is mainly that team of Ocarina guys now times two, because we've grown that team to right. support all these different programs. Right. And, um, and so they're working really hard. I mean, there is, I counted, uh, maybe I shouldn't, Name a number, but there are but there are something like ten uh, programs in different states that are now in the pipeline moving forward that, okay. that will all use some form of, of the technology. So we're really leveraging it across the whole portfolio, and it's going to be it, you know it, it takes time to do it right, and, and especially in a big company like Dell. But but you know what we have on our side is we don't have a lot of legacy baggage to deal with. Mm. I mean, everyone's marching in the same direction, and everyone's enthusiastic about. You know about adopting the best of breed components yeah. to do the right job. Ocarina had a lot of technology, but didn't have a huge installed customer base at the time of the acquisition, right? I mean, no, it was not a, really. No. It was really more of a technology play, right. not an accretive revenue opportunity. Right. Although some of those customers still have the Ocarina gear, we still support them, and and they're now, you know, we get to go sell Dell storage to them, uh, okay. which is great. But we have a good relationship there. Um, and as we move more from say. SMB oriented NAS products, file system products into more scale out, large enterprise oriented file system products. Um, you know, those were kind of the nature of the, the Ocarina <coughs> legacy customers. And so we, you know, we keep those relationships alive and they've been given us valuable feedback. Um, you know, so the, the uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, a lot of interesting dynamics right now with the acquisitions. And, you know, we're still, there's still a degree of, you know, we spend a certain amount of our time kind of merging processes okay. and meeting new people and and you know we you know we can kind of look at oh oh we didn't do this very well it's, well we have to re-engineer it anyway because we have a new organization here to deal with or or a new go-to-market model because we have to think about new things so it's, it, you know it's a uh, it feels like a startup environment i mean no one coming from ocarina and our 40 person company startup company feels like we've run into this monolithic wall of, of goo that's going to just good. slow everyone down. That's so good. It's, it's but what's good. been the one challenge that we've talked a little bit around challenges, but uh, can you delve into? The one challenge, what, from, one a, from an Ocarina perspective, would you say? Or yeah, just in into general, the transit. I mean. No, yeah, from Ocarina with the, with the transition into Dell. Yeah, um, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. The, the biggest... I mean, so there are there are challenges from an integration perspective. There are challenges from a, a, a business perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can touch on different things. From an integration perspective, you know, I thought Cisco was kind of the model in terms of, you know, really killing it. You know, they've done it a hundred times. Right. And it's just <laughs> it chunk a chunk a chunk, yeah. chunk right. a new company. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think the experience, personally, and speaking for the team, was tremendous. I mean, just... Yeah. Uh, the respect for the local culture. I mean, we get we get free snacks in our kitchen in, in Sunnyvale, <laughs> but no one in Round Rock would ever get that. No, 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 so no. Like, so they did tell anyone. So they did respect local culture. Absolutely, Good. and, and so Good. just don't tell anyone because yeah. it could get. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you certainly haven't done that. We are live on the queue. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Silicon sorry, Angle TV. Round Rock. Uh, everyone, Sunnyvale. Uh, uh, don't sorry say to sorry to was it Sunnyvale you said? Sorry, yeah, 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 sorry to Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale, lose the olives. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, things like that have, they're, they're kind of symbolic in a way. I mean, and, and, yeah. the, and the executive leads that have kind of, you know, they put a top level guy in charge of the acquisition. I mean, these guys go to bat for some of those issues and, and, uh, and it's, it's work. We haven't lost anyone. We've doubled the size of the team. So. did double the size of the team. Yeah, they talked about the saying, investment this morning. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's gone. So there's five, I mean, I can speak just for, just for storage. There's five dev centers, right? We've got. Minnesota, we've got Nashville, we've got Israel, we've got uh, Silicon Valley, and then we've got the uh, Austin yeah. Round Rock yeah. area, and that's yeah. and that's a non-trivial management. Are you spending more time on planes? Well, I I spend a lot of time on planes because yeah. I, the team I lead is based in Round Rock, and I live in San Jose area. Okay. So. Ah. And you are you part of the quarterly? Uh, 
uh, meetups in terms of integration that Darren was talking about we earlier. Talking about the, the, these, the uh, these, wonderful meetings in Minnesota. Yeah, they want to do Minnes No, it says not Minnesota in winter. Oh, that's not right, Minnesota right. <laughs> well, you know, you got to know know which meetings you don't want to go to. Also. Yeah. Right. So I, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm busy. That's yeah, yeah. You got to pick your battles. Yeah. But so there's um, um, surprisingly little challenges on the on the integration side um, from a from a you know, one of the challenges was really uprooting what we did as a company at Ocarina, which was sell this appliance dedupe and compression box mm -hmm. into third-party storage environments. And we kind of uprooted that, and we had a sales team that kind of had to, you right. know, we had to figure out how to reposition them into Dow. So there was a little bit of, you know, based on the strategy, I mean, it's just a fact of life. Some things you have to get done, and yeah. all those, most of those people are still happily employed here and have found now storage-oriented positions. Um, um, so n once we got through that repositioning, then it's really just down to execution. Okay. And, and now the big challenges are how do you get across five de uh, development teams um, who are going to use our the, the Ocarina technology components in their platforms? You know, how do we do that the best way in the shortest time to market without yeah. re ripping and replacing code that they've already written right. and and optimizing for those platforms? Because it's not you can't just say copy, paste, paste, paste across a block array, a NAS system, an archival system, of course. Or, or even a server uh, product. And um, We have to think about the use case and the workflow and the performance expectations yeah. and what kind of data is going to be stored there, what throughput so, it has to have. So, so there's a lot of data in the cloud. Some of the cloud suppliers, right? so cloud services companies, mm -hmm. one, of the things that they're, one of the things that they're doing when they build out their infrastructure is they're actually just using internal storage in servers, right? They, so they, they buy a Dell server, Dell's X86 one of, box they buy an X86 disk, with a bunch of disks, right? Yep, yep. What's your play there? Are mm -hmm. you part of that? Are you working with the, with the server team as well? Yeah. Well, there's a, I mean, there's an interesting end state vision where a customer, whether it's an enterprise or a cloud provider has just a whole bunch of commodity compute and storage resources and their x86 boxes with right. disk in them. Right. And you can kind of dynamically provision them. Hey, I'm going to assign a, a VM, a storage or server personality to you 1,000 boxes. I'm going to assign a s storage personality to mm -hmm. the other 4,000 and it's all going to work. Um, you know, and that's, that's a viable view to, to have. I mean, we have line of sight into how we can go implement that. Now there's, you know, the question is how do we step along that path to get there? And I, sure. I, uh, you know, I'm not. I don't want to fixate on the cloud providers because that's a tiny market in aggregate. But what okay. the tiny market? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. You know, look at the number of people out there and the terabytes that are actually being utilized as compared to the okay. global market for enterprise. I can see that at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll but it's that. not going to be. But there's tiny, a directional. Right? There's so, so there's a there, and there's a, there's clearly so now do you have and, a direction and, there. And there's well, so there's yeah, there's lots of ways to answer that question. But <laughs> but. but um, so we take, we, you know, I personally look at that market as, hey, these guys are early adopters in terms of driving multi-tenant, secure, right. wide area accessible stores. Now, if that's the goal in mind, then then that more clearly frames it for me. I need wide area capabilities. Right. I need security. Right. I need multi-tenancy, regardless need of whether it's privately deployed or publicly right. deployed. Mm -hmm. now, we're, we're, yeah, we were talking this morning to one of the cloud providers, Island, who said, you know, right. If I've got five data centers or seven data centers, whatever they've got today, I think seven now, uh, two in London, and mm -hmm. so they've got to move data, they got to replicate data around. Mm -hmm. So one of the things they want to do is reduce the amount of data that they've got to move around and Absolutely. still be able to restore all the instances. So one of the, ten, so one of the jobs I have is, yeah. is, is defining what we mean by our fluid strategy. Hmm. And when you saw Darren and Michael talk a little bit about our fluid strategy, it's you, you're not seeing all the underlying details. We kind of have a roadmap of capabilities. Actually, the, here's the physical capability we're going to deliver over the coming three or four year period. I'm, I mean, that's one of my jobs is to try to pull that together and then drive that through our architecture teams to make okay. sure everyone is bought into it and aligned and building the right components and sharing the right components to make that happen. And it includes obvious things like tiering, uh, tiering within platforms and across platforms, you know, kind of the classic ILM stuff we've been talking about for a long time, but I think there's a there's a way to do it in a simpler way, a way to do it that that's 
has less egregious licensing terms and forklift upgrade issues, and and it, it just hasn't been done right. But if you ask every customer in the room, they'll say, yeah, I'd love to implement tiering. You know, mm-hmm. there's some obstacles to, to doing that or have been. But yeah. um, um, another one is is use of the cloud. I mean, that's absolutely a tenant of what we're talking about in fluid data. Now, I you'll start to hear us talking about the Dell cloud rather than say, hey, yeah, we'll support an S3 interface and you go do what you want to do. I mean, we, we think that there are real in- opportunities for innovation in the clouds, on the cloud services side. Um, and so we're going to be looking closely at, at, at those kinds of things. I mean, there are, there are services today, for example, that an enterprise could license at great cost, which means that for an average SMB customer, mid-sized customer, you know, maybe not such a good fit. You know, sure. Paying six figures for a li- for a license for a piece of software that does index and search and so forth. But you know what? If you can amortize the cost and complexity of those kinds of things across petabytes of, of cloud backend and, and deliver them in a pay-as-you-go model, which right. is precisely the value proposition of, of a, cl- a utility storage service like that, um, th- you know, then that's really interesting. Now. Um, you know, we, we always intend to support openness and the, and the support for third-party software products in the workflow and third-party storage products will attach to our servers. I mean, we're never not going to do away with any of that, but but there's de- distinctly going to be a, a, a better together story. So if you're using an Equalogic platform. That, sorry, that was an HP term there, so. Oh, it is? It? Wow. <laughs> yes. uh, strike that. So you, know, you need to strike that for Rewind. Your vocabulary. Rewind. Okay. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back up. Whoa. <laughs> Dell, <laughs> Dell on Dell value uh, proposition. There you go, I Dell suppose. on Dell. Yeah. Dell on Dell. Yeah. Um, and, and so you'll start to see us talk about things like, hey, every storage platform we ship should be cloud enabled. And, and to simplify that, to make it you know, totally painless and reliable, to you know, eliminate the complexity, to have coordinated transfer of optimized data, right? right? So this system communicates over here and says, hey, I already have those chunks, don't send them to me, those kinds right. of protocols. Um, we can do that much easier, more effectively, in, you know, when it's Dell talking to Dell. So there, you know, that's, these are some of the things we'll leverage the Dell cloud for, and it will become extremely easy for a customer that doesn't have, so we find even customers that do have multiple facilities that could set up replication targets in the other facilities, it's still a hassle. Yeah. You still need to negotiate bandwidth from your facilities people. You still have to, you know, deal with standing up the, the other system and administering it. There will be a point where it will be easier and, and, and more cost effective to just click on the menu, oh, use Dell replication target service, you know, for example, something that's, that's precisely aligned with that platform in mind, that's optimized transfer, that uses a utility model that, that you know, gets billed through the same mechanism as, as everything you've seen from Dell before. Now, you know, that's that's the kind of a cloud service that will become pervasive and widespread. There are early adopters today that are starting to use the cloud in the enterprise, but until you sort of reach that ease of use and integration level, you know, you, that's when you see the knee of the curve. Really. Yeah. So you um, you made a claim earlier when when you first arrived that you have the best deduplication, most effective deduplication yeah. and compression technology on the planet that you you reduce and compress better than anyone else. Yep. So back can you can, can you back that up? <laughs> yep. Tell tell me why. You're a hard hitting reporter there. It John. is. You know, we will stand by that claim and, and are you, are um, you offering and, and, a guarantee? Well you're not shipping it right now. Guarantee. So. Well, well yeah. uh, sure there's a warranty on <laughs> our products, right? So the 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 claim is in any Apple's Apple scenario, we will shrink better. I mean there there are scenarios, for example, where uh, the workflow for that customer may not be suited to a, a, a given, you know, platform that does optimization. That's an apples to oranges scenario. We won't talk about those. But, but in an apples to apples scenario, we can c- compare two things in the same workflow. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we will shrink better. Now, um, there, there's a couple reasons for that. Okay. One is uh, people. Um, so we're the only company that I know of that actually has algorithm PhDs. It's, these are the kinds uh, of guys. You know, I, I, from, I, I'm sorry. I think Diligent made that claim that he hired more. You P- think so? I, I think Duran Kempel made that same claim. How long that ago? 
Well, Dura, uh, Kemp, uh, uh, Diligent was acquired by IBM, right? Well, they're doing the same. They're doing the same thing. You know, and I'm right? absolutely and sure IBM has plenty of PhDs I that think will they claim have to be involved in algorithms. But yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, so you, you anyway, you hired that, a bunch that, of PhDs. That, so we will make <laughs> yeah. a. We, we, we made a, We'll certainly make a claim that the, the some of the guys we've hired to do algorithm work for us are top guys in that field are renowned as sort of leaders, half in academic, half in, you know, uh, commercial environments uh, in terms of inventing new algorithms like compression algorithms for specialized data sets. Yeah. And, and that's, there, there hasn't been a lot of development in compression algorithms per se in the, in the last 15, 20 years. We I mean, still see deflate, flate, um, LZ, LZ77 derivatives. Uh, uh, dominating a lot of the compression landscape because they tend to be generic and and, and good enough for some good enough for some and have good, they have good performance so right. you don't have to think about optimizations there but you know you take those into some use cases yes. data is pre-compressed or something like that and you get very little in the way so of results. So can you so, operate on pre-compressed data? Yep, absolutely. So okay. one of the things that the, the, the other reason we shrink better, uh, we have good people, we have good algorithms that we invented and, and we're not patenting those, those are, those are trade secrets. Um, we also have uh, a lot of work on the logic that picks algorithms. So at runtime, when data is streaming so in. You have a ton of algorithms and you choose based upon the data type. Exactly, okay. so we can actually shrink data that we've never seen before. So we will, the system will actually sort of test different algorithms at runtime and pick the one that's winning okay. and it will remember those choices. So, so there's, there's okay. it's, it's actually, we've, I, I hesitate to use the term neural network, but a, a learning, a context-weighted learning algorithm, which is technically the definition of a neural network, uh, is something that that we used, we've used in the legacy Ocarina product. I just, I just want to make sure I got that. A context-weighted, uh, weighted learning, learning algorithm. algorithm. And that means it, whatever algorithm. is winning over time, we weight that al that thing okay. more, and so when we see that data okay. again, we go yeah. directly and to And give us it. an example of a data type that you, that was Have thrown at you that you hadn't before, seen before. Yeah. Sure, I mean, so to be effective at compressing DICOM images, yeah. you need to understand uh, the headers and the file structure. So we write special algorithms that actually don't do shrinking of data, but actually do delayering. They'll take apart the file, get to the image, apply a different compression algorithm to the image mm -hmm. from the metadata and so forth. So th there's this kind of a delayering concept. Um, we've done specialized algorithms for the oil and gas industry for files like uh, SegY, which is commonly found in interpretation and in the seismic interpretation offices. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have specialized compressors for, say, EXR files, which is a file that comes off a telecine scanner in the film business. Okay. Um, yeah. And these aren't your uh, everyday home applications. Right. No, are you sure. Sure. Yeah. no, this is not in the zip uh, <laughs> software, right? Yeah. Do you do, do you get compared to uh, PKWare zip? Does that come we, up? You know, there there are specific tools for specific industries, like for JPEG compression, yeah. that do reasonably well on their own. Yeah. And and if all you want to do is shrink a bunch of JPEGs and you're willing to write the scripts around how that tool runs and it doesn't have to be particularly reliable, yeah. uh, and you can embed that code because it's freeware and you can put it in your app, you know, great. That's you know that's that's perfect. But if you want something that has enough cores to run at a good throughput, that's HA that the, okay. You know, now you need to start thinking about well how that's implemented, um, and and so forth. And so we've won a lot of deals that way. Like, yeah. well, yeah, I've got I can find this software to kind of do it, but how to scale it and how to have it be reliable and you know, so these are some of the things. Now, now that all being said, we have to take what we learned at Ocarina and plunk it into platforms that are limited in CPU resources, that are limited in RAM, yeah, cause, that have different kinds of interfaces. Yeah, because we're not dealing in HPC environments here with where they're trying to take the scalable no. file system right now, right? No, and, you, and you've got to think about, for example, in, in the, the legacy Ocarina product, which is very much oriented around the petabyte scale customers, mm -hmm. big archival. So I'm going to I'm going to store three petabytes worth of film data. Yeah. Right. Um, that's not the model for, say, a backup target. A backup target, which is focused on reducing backup windows, there's a mix of a performance requirement, how fast can you throughput my, right. my backup set, as well as the ability to shrink. And so we would balance those things. That, that process, instead of being a policy-based post-process, would be an inline, high-speed, dedupe-oriented. And, and, and you are inline, you are, 
We're all of the above. You're now. all of the. You're we're all of the above. And it depends on the platform. Yeah. So are you the only? Interesting. I'm in line and I'm post process. We we've got a product that out there that well so. You know, without extensive research, I will I will claim that we're the only the only. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that video? What's your name? There's yeah. a great video. Oh, God, the kids were showing it to me the other day. It was a, it was a kid trying to start something, and he, he he gave a great speech. He just couldn't get it started. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Really? No, no, no. Oh. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, he just had too many thoughts. He going had too on many thoughts. Going on. One of the things so, that we we're the only ones that use both dedupe block level dedupe.